Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Civilization VI Gathering Storm, where today we are starting a new game as Matthias Corvinus of Hungary. Uh, people seemed really excited to see Hungary as our domination game civilization, so I am here to deliver that. Uh, we're playing uh, pretty much the same map settings, but we are I, I moved the dif disaster intensity up to 4. Mostly this is like a curiosity thing, I just want to see how bad it will get. But also, I think this will increase the difficulty for us more than it increases the difficulty for the AI, because they have the extra resources necessary to recover from disasters, particularly early game disasters, more easily. And as you may have noticed, the game's not terribly hard, the deity AI is not very good at winning, so we could use a little difficulty boost. Uh, so yeah, let's get going. Matthias Corvinus' unique ability is that levied units, which is to say city-state uh, city units that you have rented from the city-state by paying them gold, get extra movement and combat strength. And it costs no gold or resources to upgrade levied units. So if we if we rent an army and it's out of date, we can immediately, immediately just put it up to our, uh, our modern military standards. And every time you levy troops from a city-state, you get two envoys with that city-state. This, is, this seems very powerful to me, but obviously we're going to have to, first of all, actually meet the city-states in, uh, in order to make use of it. You can only levy units from city-states that you are the suzerain of, so we want to meet city-states early, and we definitely want to focus on things that can give us additional envoys. It's really important to complete our quests, stuff like that. Uh, I don't have a ton of experience level levying city-state units. I think I've only maybe done it a couple of times. So I don't really have a good sense of how long you you get to keep the units for. It may be the case that uh, the rental is short enough that this is only going to be useful for city-states that are already near whatever player we're fighting. Although I guess in the early game, if we can get to three envoys quickly, uh, doing a levy to help us get to six is viable. Uh, our second ability is Pearl of the Danube, plus 50% production to districts and buildings in districts constructed across a river from the city center. This is a little bit ambiguous. Uh, I'm not 100% sure whether it means that the uh, district that you get the production bonus in, in order for you to get a production bonus in a district, it has to be adjacent to the city center and across a river, or if it means any tile that is on the other side of a river from the city center. I guess we will uh, We will have to find out. Uh, the first thing I think when I see that is that it... Um, not This is not the button I want. Here we go. The first thing I think when I see that is that it might be good for helping us get a religion early. Because we can get the holy site and the shrine up faster than everybody else. Uh, and then we have... We have two unique units. A medieval era unit that replaces the courser, which is a... Uh, this, this is a horse unit. Plus three combat strength for each adjacent levied unit. I'm not actually sure how unique units interact with levying armies. Like, if we if we levy an army and then upgrade their horse stuff, will it upgrade into a courser or a black army? I'm just I'm a, I'm not sure because those units aren't actually Hungarian. But if they do in fact upgrade into our uniques, then this seems great. Even without that, this seems pretty good. The combat strength difference between a unit from one era and a unit from the next era is usually about ten points, I think. So, um, if you can get this to plus 9 or even plus 12, it seems really, really great. The Hussar uh, is a unique industrial area unit that replaces cavalry, which uh, is a knighter unit, I believe. Plus 3 combat strength for every active alliance is not great in a game where we're planning to kill all the other players, but uh, we could figure out who we're going to kill last and ally with them, and then use that alliance to boost cavalry while we're fighting other people. Maybe that'll work. And finally, we have the Thermal Bath, plus two amenities and plus two production, extends to each city center within six tiles. These bonuses apply only once to a city. What is this a replacement for? It says in the unit description what they're a replacement for, but it doesn't say here. I'm assuming it's a um, an entertainment complex building because of the amenities. Yeah, it's a zoo. Okay, so that's pretty late in the game. That's fine, I guess. I'm not terribly excited about that. We have more of an incentive to build uh, entertainment complexes than other people do, which is probably a good thing. And then we are on... We're on a Plains Hill right now. So if we settle the city here, the city center itself would be two food, two production, which is nice. 
Uh, I think we see hints of tundra down there. Do we see the southern map border? Hmm, maybe not. Maybe that's not what this is. Hmm, well, there are things I like about this start. I'm wondering if we maybe want to move over here just to get more tiles to build districts across from the city center on. I do like starting on Plains Hill an awful lot, and that would mean that we have the city center getting two food, two production, and the first citizen getting two food, three production. That's a pretty good early uh, early boost to your building capabilities. I think we are just going to put down right here. So, do we actually want to go for an early religion? A religion can be very useful in a military game. No, that totally is Tundra. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, a religion can be very useful in a military game. There's a lot of stuff you can do with, uh, with uh, combat strength bonuses from a religion. If we were going to go for it, we really ought to start with astrology right now. And that does, uh, it obviously, building the holy site and <clears throat> building the shrine does set you back in terms of both science and production from going other paths. And it makes your city a little bit less defensible early on, which may or may not be a safe thing to do. I think we're just going to skip it. I don't, I don't think that this is a uh, this is a game where we need to have a religion. So let's go Animal Husbandry so we can pick up our uh, our furs luxury resource here and also reveal horses because we know we have a unique unit that requires them. It might be a good idea to prioritize our second settle or maybe even our third settle by the presence of some horses. And because we want to meet city-states early, we probably want to be pretty aggressive with our scouting this game. I do think our, our capital location is quite defensible. With the rivers and the the mount, like the shield of mountains and stuff, it would be very difficult for people to attack us early. And we have the three-point uh, city combat strength bonus from being on a hill. Which helps a little bit. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, we probably ought to kill the scout. I mean, obviously I want to go for the village, but... Let's see if we can stop this scout from making it to our city. Or if we just wipe out the camp, that'll be just as good. Uh, I sort of want to go north. Yeah. I guess, I guess we can head down here and get on this hill and see if there's anything else going on south of these rivers. So notice a lot of floodplains around here. These like tiles that look sort of dirty and scrubby are uh, floodplains. So all of these tiles could be damaged by river flooding, and because the disaster intensity up, that could be, like, frequent and really dangerous river flooding. And now we have a decision to make. Do we want to get a settler out right now? Or, I'm um, sorry, a builder? Or do we maybe want to go for a monument first? Of course, science is important to a military victory, because you need to unlock new unit types, and you need to unlock the, the resources that give you access to advanced units. But we should not neglect culture. This is not going to be like the religious game where you just don't need to build any theater squares at all because there's so little in the culture tree. Um, culture gives us access to both military policies that will actually increase our ability to create our military units by quite a bit, but also eventually, uh, I think it's on nationalism, yeah, eventually the ability that we've seen to create uh, corps and fleets and armadas and armies. And like you, you do, you keep picking up valuable red policies, right? So we do want to make sure that we have some theater squares, we have some culture growth, and getting our monument up early. Yeah, I think we're gonna go for this. Getting our monument up early will help a lot with that. Meeting a cultural city state or two would also help a lot with that. Oh, hey, free builder. Okay, we'll get the best of both worlds then. Definitely want to do this. Okay, I don't know if there's anything over here. So we can see a word on the map. Given the alignment of that word, I doubt it is the name of a river. I bet that's a volcano. Nope, it is in fact a ri the river. And also, hey, look who it is. Queen of the Netherlands. Okay, so we know what she wants us to do. And actually, trading with her might be a good idea, right? We need to, uh, we need to be able to produce a lot of money in order to levy city-state units. 
So maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll start trading with her early and try to get her friendly. She could be our first target, but she could also be the friend that we use to cover our back while we fight our first targets. Because we need to have a little bit better view of the surrounding world before we know which one of those things is going to be a better idea. All right, we'll just build our camp next turn. I don't love the situation we've ended up in here in regards to scouts. They're in front of us, so we're going to have a hard time meeting, meeting any city-states over here before they do. Okay, so we got a couple of good, strong starting tiles. I assume we are working the right tiles? Yeah, okay. That tile's going to be uh, two food, three production once we build the pasture on it, so that's pretty great. And given that we have another player right here, we definitely need to either get mining and go to masonry, or we need to finish archery, like, pretty immediately. We certainly don't want a repeat of the thing that happened with Scotland. The AI is not good at winning the game, but you should not give them opportunities, you know? So... I am a little torn. Temple of Artemis gives plus one amenity from each camp and pasture and plantation. Also, plus four food and plus three housing. That would be a cool thing to have. We probably will not be able to get this because we probably have too many other things we have to build. Yeah, let's let's pick up mining. And part of the reason I want to go to mining, even though it doesn't get us the defensive uh, benefit as early because we're like pretty close to archery, is that we do want to have encampments just in general. Great, great generals are important to have. The extra production from the encampments will be important to have. So if we can uh, if we can work on making ourselves more defensible while simultaneously working toward infrastructure improvements, we definitely want to do that. So we don't have any stone to quarry. We could come down here and build a mine on the copper in order to get a, uh, a boost to wheel. And it won't actually take us that long to get those horses. Uh, once we have the monument up, we'll be producing more culture and thus acquiring tiles more quickly. Alright, so what does it actually look like now? Three turns? I think we can just wait. We don't need to spend the gold. So we need to attack two more times to get our level up. I'm tempted to, ju to just um, heal up in place before attacking again. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Just in case they um, spawn a warrior unit. Because encampments do randomly spawn warriors very occasionally, even when they're not in uh, raiding party mode. And this is probably a good time to either build... A settler or another military unit. If we built a settler over here along the Zagiva River, might be a good place. We do have access to some horses over there. We don't need access to horses so badly because the capital has them. Um, we also could actually get access to the ocean. Yeah, we don't see any settling locations that are like a slam dunk. Certainly not that are not any that are as good as our capital. But I suppose we do need to like get more cities down. Neither one of these is the uh, Dutch capital, so we, we know they have at least three cities right now. Probably for the best we try to keep up. And I don't think that we are in a position where there's a pantheon that we really benefit from. I'm not going to push God King. I think let's just stick, uh, stick to our policy, stick to our strategy of being productive. Let's build lots of things very quickly. You are just waiting... Boy, we are not going to meet any city-states at all, apparently. And now that we have the combat strength bonus against barbarians, there's no reason to wait on this anymore. Well, let's go ahead and get foreign trade up. I should mo I should note that um, this policy on craftsmanship is really good, but we definitely like traders are traders are too powerful not to go for early, and also obviously uh, our diplomatic relationship will be improved by having traders. Okay, hey, we finally met a city-state, and somehow we managed to meet them before a Dutch scout did. So that's some bonus phase for us. Turns out we're going to get to choose a pantheon anyway. 
And if we become suzerain of Armagh, we will be able to build monasteries, which provide faith, extra healing for friendly religious units, so we don't really care about that. Also, plus one housing with an additional housing once colonialism is discovered. That's very interesting. Yeah, being able to build an improvement that gives a full point of housing. That's certainly something to think about. Alright, get our pasture up. Bonus for craftsmanship for having improved three tiles. This is a pretty good start. We have a lot of good tiles here. You can take the battle cry bonus, and now we've got this cleared, and that's going to be a bunch of extra money for us. And we've discovered a tile that is on another continent. I'm hoping that we're going to find like a cluster of city-states over here. Alright, sadly that is just a little bit too far away from our capital to get the bonus point of era score. If you destroy a barbarian camp that's within six tiles, you get three era score instead of two. We just got a little bit unlucky with the placement of that. So let's have this warrior check out what's up here to the north. We still have a little bit of time before we need to make any real uh, decisions with our settlers' movement. I'm inclined to settle away from the Netherlands so that uh, if they want to attack us, they have to deal with the capital, which is a very productive and well-defended city. Sorry, when I say well defended, of course I mean by the terrain. We've only killed one barbarian unit right now, so it's not super likely that we're going to be able to get the boost here. Right? I don't we didn't actually kill that scout. Maybe I want to go to masonry instead. I mean, we don't have that boost either, though. We could get the wheel and have our defense be uh, heavy chariots. The wheel does give bonus food to wheat resources, which is fine in the capital, but would be, probably be quite good in this city over here. Maybe that is a better way to go. The thing is, we really want encampments. Encampments are one of the very few sources of early game production bonuses. And obviously, great generals are very, very useful. All right, do we want to change anything? I don't think so, right? We found a geothermal... What do you call it? A geothermal fissure over here. Yeah, for the moment, I'm inclined to think we're settling somewhere near these rivers. It's not looking like a great expansion location. Well, let's make a trader. I don't know if we're going to... We're probably not going to send the trader to her. Maybe our second trader? Or maybe we just kill her. So do we want to go to early empire for more settler production? Or do we want to start turning toward craftsmanship to maybe push into the government plaza? I kind of think I want to go to early empire. I don't love how slow our culture output still is. Early Empire means that we could go to drama and poetry before political philosophy if we wanted. And also, we are going to need more cities. Man, it is extremely hard to move around over here. Okay, Kumasi, we've seen them. Trade routes to city-states provide bonus culture and gold for every specialty district in the origin city. That is honestly not a bad bonus. Again, we're trying to we're gonna have to find a way to get gold. They would like it if we would trigger the inspiration for early empire. That is triggered by having six population. So probably what we'll do here is we'll put culture into early empire until it gets to the point where the boost would finish it off, and then we'll leave it and, and let the uh, let our natural population growth fire that off. And the inspiration for state workforce is provided by having a specialty district. So we should be able to accomplish both of these quests pretty early. Kumasis will probably be done by the end of the uh, first era, so we'll be able to get another quest from them right after. And meeting a cultural city-state has been very, very good to us. <laughs> we needed that culture pretty badly. Somebody killed a city-state somewhere. There was a major flood... Here, which has improved a couple of tiles. 
not really relevant to us. I don't think we want to settle in that direction. Okay, I thought that might be the case, but I wasn't sure that there wouldn't be a, that there wouldn't be land around the other side of the mountains. So this area over here is like very protected then. I'm kind of tempted to settle right there on top of the wheat, just because this is a super good location for a campus and being able to get the uh, Pearl of the Danube production bonus on that seems really nice. And it's not a terrible location for a city, and it's close enough to Buda that we'd be able to uh, we'd be able to reinforce very quickly units that are built here. Yeah, I think that may be what we do. So you, I actually built you a little faster than I needed to. Oh no, actually, this this is perfect. We can rebase you this turn and then start the trade route at the very earliest moment that it was available. That's pretty handy. Awesome. More city-states. Uh, we did not get a free envoy with Hong Kong. So they've met somebody else. There's somebody else up in this direction. Plus 20% production towards city projects. That's an okay bonus. Obviously, just like... Uh, industrial city-states are really, really good to have on your side. But what do they want? They want the Eureka for archery. That's probably doable. Let's try to... Let's get a slinger built and see if we can't make that happen. And then here, it's probably a builder. All right, we don't necessarily need to go aggressive super early. I want to see where the player that Hong Kong already met is because Hong Kong's military... Or Hong Kong's, yeah, military, might form the backbone of our first attack. And that that would be how that happens, right? We, we would have them attack whatever player is near them that they already met. All right, let's get that road built, because we desperately need it. Our terrain is very difficult to move through. Somebody built the Great Bath. It does seem like the AI focuses on the Great Bath so quickly that it would be very hard to get it yourself. I'm going to have this warrior run down here. We're not going to meet any city-states down in the tundra, but there could be tribal villages. Oh, here we go. Here's that player. Oh, look who it is. Yeah, I do not hate the idea of driving Cyrus out of the game as early as possible. So... Levying costs are based on the number and military... Or the number and technological advancement, rather, of the city-states units... So, also, notice <laughs> Hong Kong is already at war with Persia. Or rather, Persia is at war with Hong Kong. It's maybe a more honest way to put that. So, if we can get a little bit of early uh, questing done for Kamasi, it's totally reasonable to think we might be able to get suzerainship of Kamasi and then use their army to fight Persia. And to liberate Hong Kong from Persia's grasp. So that being a potential concern, maybe I want to make, uh, maybe I want to make this warrior move north instead. And I, I think we're gonna do some of this. It is gonna take us forever to get bronze working, though, man. We need campuses. Okay, so early empire. It looks like it would not quite be completed by the boost. You can see the the little area that the boost represents here, but it would get pretty close. Let's turn around and go to state workforce. We definitely want to leave open the ability to get that boost, especially since we're already at four population. In eight turns, we will uh, we will hit six pop and get the uh, get the inspiration for early empire and another uh, another envoy. Envoy is the word I want. So we have two hundred and sixty gold. We could just purchase a uh, a unit of some kind. I don't know that I'm in a huge hurry though. We don't need to save up too much gold for levying purposes because we're only going to be able to levy one city-state anyway unless we get, like, really lucky. We need to build and we need to build a district before we will get this. Honestly, we, may, we might not even get the bonus for state workforce we, before we finish state workforce naturally. I'm kind of inclined to build a settler. We have three improved tiles over here. Like we're already work, we're already exclusively working improved tiles in this city, and we have another. We have a builder coming out there. I might 
just make another military unit, honestly. Probably useful to have. And we've earned a Pantheon bonus. I don't think we actually have a very good one available to us. So we could pick up... Like, what's our situation here? We have just sort of like a smattering of general resources. We don't have a, like a lot of pastures or a lot of plantations. So all of these ones that are like a bonus from a particular type of tile improvement seem pretty, pretty weak to me. We maybe just want to take fertility rights. Fertility rights is never great, but it's always fine. It's always good. Yeah, we're probably not building a lot of holy sites. Divine Spark doesn't really do anything for us. Yeah, I think we're just going to take a 10% uh, a boost, boost effectively to our food. That is always totally acceptable. Right, I'm hoping we can meet some more city-states up here somewhere. I'm also hoping that Hong Kong will hold out. The city has an 18 uh, garrison strength, which makes it kind of annoying to attack with warriors, but it looks like he has enough people going at it that they're going to get it. Oh, hey! Well, here's my opportunity to get the boost for archery, which unfortunately is probably not going to actually end up mattering. Well, it's not going to end up mattering for envoy purposes. The boost to archery does let us get archery more quickly, so that in that sense it matters quite a bit. Yep, so Persia has stolen Hong Kong, and we must get it back. That's alright, that should absolutely be a thing we can do. We're just going to have to get a little bit lucky with Kumasi having already built a lot of military units, basically. So in four turns, we're going to get a card, we're going to get access to a yellow card that makes it faster to build the settlers. I'm thinking we build military units now, and then we, uh, we get the settlers going as soon as we have the card. We probably don't need the five point combat strength bonus. Like, I know we're about to fight a barbarian encampment, but I think we probably have it under control. And producing these military units even faster does seem like a good idea. Okay, that's a border, and it looks like that looks like a civilization border to me. So we may be out of luck on the uh, on the city state thing here. Right, come on, please get this. Yes, all right. Unfortunately, Kumasi is fairly likely to clear the encampment, so we're probably not going to get the gold there. Who is this? This is Mvemba. Okay. Well, he's not going to like us very much. I'm not even going to bother sending him a delegation. I have mostly been saving money. Uh, not not sending delegations to people, which I think is reasonable. So we're two turns from the boost. I guess we can get started on the next settler now. I think we'll probably just settle down here, build ourselves like a nice uh, a nice tight group of powerful cities. Persia has declared war against Kumasi. Well, let's get up there and fix that. You guys are being very inconvenient right now. So Kumasi has a combat strength of 24. That is pretty well defended relative to units of this era. I'm wondering if our scout is better off trying to run between Persia and the Congo, or if we maybe want to try to squeeze out to the east. That, I believe, is the border of the Congo. You know what? Let's let's go this way. So we're not very close to our first real envoy, unfortunately. Yeah, it might be tough for us to keep the city-states alive long enough for us to actually be able to levy, levy anything. Right, let's get early empire now. <coughs> Excuse me.
And it's a real pain in the ass to move around over here with city-state units constantly blocking uh, the route. So what do we need next? Still moving pretty slowly on bronze working. It might have been a better idea... Well... I was going to say it might have been a better idea to try to get campuses going quickly. And I, like, early campuses are certainly valuable, but you can also totally get murdered. The only phase, the phase in which the AI poses the greatest threat is right now. If you're not working on your defensive techs, you can often, you can sometimes, not often even, but sometimes find yourself under attack by a, just a carpet of terrible early units that are able to overwhelm you with sheer numbers. So I did want to try to get defensive techs up quickly. I'm looking around right now thinking, like, where would be a good place for a fourth city? Do we want to put down a fourth? Or do we want to start building a settler here? It's unfortunate that Armagh is settled exactly where it is because it makes all of the tiles adjacent to this river unsettleable. We could settle over on this river instead, although... Basically, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is take advantage of these two banana tiles, which are very, very good. Uh, maybe we settle right there and we just have to aqueduct over to the river later. This is a defensible position with some good tiles. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it is worth building another settler right now. I guess I'm going to try. We got our second envoy with Kumasi. We're very close to being able to levy their army, but close is not good enough. So when the next era begins, they'll give us a quest. They definitely want to get plus 50% production towards settlers in there. Also, get to hire our first governor. I don't actually know who this is going to be. We might need the Pingala boost really badly. I think um, my plan with this guy is to now clear this. We know we want to build a campus here, uh, so we can we can chop this as soon as bronze working is finished, and then that'll give us a big boost toward that settler. Yeah, we might need Pingala just because like we're short enough on science that any science boost is valuable. Capital's only producing 4.2, so Pingala's only, like, he's not even a full point of science from his librarian ability. Uh, I don't want... We could, we could hire Magnus and have him go to the new city for the purpose of taking advantage of Groundbreaker on that feature that we're going to remove, but that seems like a long wait. We're definitely going to want to get Victor, the combat governor... Uh, but we don't necessarily need to get him right now. So he increases city combat strength and then gives us some additional abilities that'll be relevant even more. Combat strength for our units near the city he's in. Uh, an additional range strike from the city. I'm wondering, like, who is the one that we want right this second? Amani might end up being important to us as well. Actually, let's get Amani. I'm going to appoint her to Kumasi, because she would give us suzerainship. Or maybe, actually, maybe she should be appointed over here. We can hope to get Kumasi the natural way and be able to have... Um, yeah, 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 I like that better. Also, there's less chance of this city not existing in five turns. So the era is coming to an end soon. We are not doing super well on era score. A tile was damaged, but also two tiles were fertilized. Well, we're going to have to get a builder on that. It is just a nightmare to move around over here. All right, you're going to wait a couple of turns. Well, something tells me we're not going to meet any city-states up here. It looks like he's not uh, succeeding in putting pressure on Kumasi. Right, like he's doing a little bit of damage very occasionally. Oh, they won't let us enter their border. Right. 
Well, you just heal up. We'll be able to soon. So it only pillaged the farm. It didn't destroy it. So we'll clear this on this coming turn, and then we'll head down here and repair this before we spend his last charge doing I don't even know what. Also, we're showing zero turns until growth. That's weird. Okay, yes, yeah, so there's, there's nothing left up here. I think our scout um, is going to have to head east to see anything new. The Netherlands are running a trade route to us instead of within their own empire. Seems like a pretty bad play to me. We're going to have this guy settle down here. Uh, maybe I should... Maybe I should have him be the northern settle. Just so the city has a little bit more time to uh, grow. And it turns out there's iron underneath this, uh, this tile right here. So that's what we're going to spend our third builder charge on. But yeah. Persia is just not, they're not getting the job done over here, which is very, very good for us. Now, repairing does not cost a build charge, so we definitely want to do this before uh, building the iron. Otherwise, our builder will cease to be. We certainly want to get all that stuff done. So if we liberate Hong Kong, we'll get to have... Uh, they'll, they'll give us free envoys, and we'll be able to be their suzerain and thus lev levy their army as well. So we might be able to get a little bit of like a, a snowball thing going over here. And what do we want to build in this city next? I kind of want to get that encampment up. It's going to take a while for this to actually work. Uh, I'm inclined to build it right here, I think. Because this will give it the ability to shoot anybody trying to come in through the northern pass and anybody trying to come in from the south. This mountain keeps them within two tiles of uh, of the encampment. That's good shooting range. But there's something to be said for doing it like here or here instead to allow us to take advantage of the fact that um, its melee units lose combat strength when attacking across rivers. Because right here, it would be pretty easy for the Dutch to attack if I built it here there's only one there's only a couple of tiles that can attack it without having to attack across a river and they they have to move to those tiles while under constant fire from it right here it doesn't protect the city's northern boundary boundary though so maybe like this is a better spot I will say though I don't love the fact that this location is susceptible to flooding I am going to build it here because this is not susceptible to flooding I do not want to have to be rebuilding my uh, my stuff all the time. So I get what you're going for here, but we really like we need to work the tiles that have food, and this tile will have more food soon. That's already only 12 turns to the, to the next point of population. So now the question is, do we go for archery or do we go for writing? I think we got to go for archery first. When we levy the city states units, we want to. Um, that was a hint to her agenda, by the way. She wants us to have a lot of population. When we levy the city-states units, we want to be able to upgrade them to archers immediately. If they had any slingers, which it looks like they don't. I guess let's get a little bit more vision of his empire. Obviously, the scout's going to want to bail out of here pretty quickly. But once we're at war with Cyrus, we can just run across his land to get out. Yep, and you're mad at me, I get that. Yeah, he's not going to succeed in taking Kamasi. So we become the suzerain of Armagh, and now we could just levy their military immediately. We get their stuff for 30 turns. It's just a couple of warriors. Oh, and a slinger. In four turns, we'll be able to do this... Um, Nobody else is influencing them right now, so I don't know that we need to do this immediately. Let's let's wait a second here. So we have five turns left in this era. It looks like we're probably going to get a normal age. 
uh, not settler continent. Okay, this is this. Yeah, this is all the same continent. So we're not going to get a we're not going to get an era score bonus for settling on the new continent. We're not going to get an era score bonus for settling near the river because I think you only get that for settling near rivers that might flood. There we go. There's a point of era score for us. We could have our settler run down there and get that. This is a hill, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is an okay place to set up. Man, actually getting over here has been a total nightmare. So he has no walls, and his cities have low combat strength, which means that they uh, these unit these cities do not have units garrisoned in them. I believe that when we are suzerain of a city-state, we can upgrade our units in their territory. I think that's true. So we might be able to upgrade this guy to an archer pretty much immediately. A couple of archers will be all we need to really do a lot of damage to these cities. And Cyrus is apparently... Quite happy to just burn his units out against the uh, against the wall of Kumasi. They don't even have proper like military style walls. It's just you know the the things they use to keep the rain out. Good enough. Please don't do this. Please don't run your military units all the way down here. That doesn't help me. Please don't do things that aren't directly about me and my goals. Yeah, this is, this is looking pretty good for us, actually. Uh, we get another governor title. I don't know that we necessarily want to push further on Kumasi. Or on, uh, on Amani, rather. Maybe this would be the time to pick up more of an infrastructure governor. Or to just start getting Victor going. When we do settle the city to the north, we're probably going to want Victor in it right away. And it would be cool if he had Garrison Commander by then. Yeah, okay, let's let's make it him. And we'll just put him in Estragon for now. He needs to be somewhere. No, they're not they're not gonna let me get that. Well that sucks. With that being the case, I probably shouldn't even bother. We should probably just put the city down. Uh where do we want to do that? Man, what a time for this Dutch scout to get over to here. We could settle right there, take advantage of the wheat. That gives us one space to take advantage of, Pearl of the Danube as well. It's like, fine? We could settle on the, the Plains Hill for the extra point of production, with more production nearby. I think this is a better settle. Honestly, you probably don't move again until after we've declared war. Cyrus's capital is pretty nearby. He's got a fair number of undefended cities here. I am hopeful that we are going to be able to make something happen. So let's... Okay, Kumasi just, like, bought a bunch of units. That's pretty good. Their military would cost us 160 gold to levy. What I'd really like to do is try to see what their... Uh, what the quest they're going to give us at the next era is before we declare war, but we're kind of in position now. Maybe this is the time. The thing is, I don't actually get... Yeah, you know, we're... let's not declare just yet. Maybe next turn. I want my Slayer to be in a position where I can immediately attack with it, if possible. Okay, repair. Apparently there's a barbarian camp to our south, which could be a problem in the near, the near future. Maybe we're going to Dark Age. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It's not so bad to Dark Age right away. Um, especially if a heroic era follows, which it totally might. Uh, my troops are merely passing by. So if we say my troops are merely passing by here, um, then 
we will generate grievances for breaking a promise when we do declare war. But if we declare war right now, it's his turn currently. If we declare war right now, his units get to shoot first. So we're going to lie to him. We're just going to tell him a big lie. I kind of hate that he was able to do that, because we are not... Like, we didn't even have a single unit adjacent to one of his uh, city borders. Alright, yeah, let's see what Kamasi's next quest for us is going to be. And put this city down here. Definitely got to get this iron. And here we might just build the government plaza. Although maybe I want that in Estragon more. Now, Estragon probably wants to, like, be able to build troops, so we can move them up pretty quickly. We do need a builder as well. I think I'm going to go ahead and build the government plaza here. It's a very, very useful thing to have, and it'll get us the extra, um, the extra governor title that we definitely want. And if we build it directly across the river right here, it'll get up fairly quickly. Seven turns. Yeah, that's... That's okay. I'm pretty disappointed that we did not meet a scientific city-state. That would have made things really easy for us. But we probably ought to pick up horseback riding. It's going to be ooh, 17 turns. We should probably pick up riding. Never mind. Never mind that thing I said. Like, we have horses, and horsemen are great. But our science is terrible. We really need to improve our science. I wish Kumasi would stop buying warriors and would start buying archers. Okay, they want... Ah, oh man, they want me to recruit a great prophet. Well, that's a quest that we definitely can never do. Uh, at some point, we'll get an envoy off of influence points, and I guess that's how we'll become their suzerain. Armag wants the Eureka for sailing. Which we probably also are not going to get. So yeah, just like bad all around there, really. Okay, we are in a dark age. Our citizens are producing less loyalty pressure. So, error score each time you trigger a Eureka. Error score each time you trigger an Inspiration. We actually are probably going to construct a bunch of districts here. I think probably Monumentality is the way to go. I was really hoping we were going to be able to get suzerainship of Kabasi. Well, so now we have to... Now we have to debate whether we want to take Armog at all, or whether we'd rather switch Amani over. I, actually, what happens if we stop being suzerain while we have their units levied? I don't actually know. Let's levy them with such a large standing army. You may want to consider adding mercenaries. Yeah, good, uh, good advice there. So actually, oh, levying their, uh, mi their military gave us the two envoys that will keep us their uh, suzerain. We'll move Amani over, and are we in a good position here? I think I want to... We're not going to declare war until we're in a good position to attack Hong Kong. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're just going to march on Hong Kong right now and declare war on him as soon as we get there. Uh, this will make her... This will calm her down a little bit. Open borders is a good, uh, a good diplomatic modifier. And Vemba and Zinga finished building the Hanging Gardens. I don't really care about that. Okay, mousing over this timer does not give us the number of turns left on our levy. Hmm, is it not easy to see the number of turns that you have left on a levy? That's kind of not ideal. Alright, so access to a steady, a steady source of iron has enabled us to build troops that have, like, real armor and stuff. And that's definitely a technology that we want to pursue. Uh, so next turn is the turn where we declare, I guess. And if we, like I said, if we can free Hong Kong, then that means that we will get another city-state ally, and then we can push Gordian with their troops as well. Gordian has enough city strength that we know that there's a city, there's a unit garrisoned in it right now.
Okay, down here in the capital. Do I want to produce a barracks, or do I want to wait and make this a uh, a stable so that we can build horse units out of it? I think probably probably waiting for the stable is the right play for now. We could build a builder. We certainly have use for a builder. But I'm thinking maybe what I want to do is build an archer and get him started marching. Okay, so that was the sound that indicates that a barbarian encampment just spawned on a tile that we can see. Okay, it's right there. That's... that's not such a big deal. Alright, uh, I guess let's declare a surprise war, which he will, of course, enjoy very much. You know how Cyrus loves a good surprise war. Do we want to march these units on Hagwantana instead of pushing Hong Kong with them? Because it's going to take them a while to get over there. Maybe. It will at least divide his forces' attention, which is valuable. And yes, we can, in fact, just upgrade to an archer. Alright, I think we go now and have at this uh, warrior a little bit. Okay, I didn't think we had a proper cast a spell eye available. Alright, surprise war. He'll understand. He loves these. You not heard the tales? The storied might of my armies? No, not really. Were there supposed to be tales? Nobody's been telling me the tales. Okay, so they have an archer in that city. That's what that unit is. That's not ideal. Uh, unfortunately, I can't move my Armog unit because of this Armog builder that is in the way. And apparently we only levy the military units they have at the time of the levy, not all the units that they build over the period of the levy. Okay, what we can do with our scout here is like just... Stand in the in this tile and try to make it so that the city is not regenerating health constantly. We could uh, we could work on besieging it. It's a shame we don't have the ability for land units to get in water because we could build stuff from Astragom and have it come up the coast. We probably ought to get a builder. Oh, we don't want to purchase a builder because that'll put us low enough that we can't get Kumasi's military. Yeah, just give me an archer. We may end up with more military than we actually needed. Okay, there's the denunciation. I don't care about that. We knew that was coming. Oh, hey, they have multiple archers in that city. Those were not archers that they just bought either, because they wouldn't be able to attack if they were purchased that turn. It's true. My pledge was broken. I did not keep my word. Alright, so we can move up and still fire, thanks to all the extra points of movement that we get on levied units. And I'm going to pillage your holy site. That'll show you. So in order to have the city count as besieged and thus not regenerating health every turn, each tile around it must be either occupied by one of my units or in the zone of control of one of my units. Zones of control do not extend across rivers. So because of the arrangement of the river here, we're going to have to have a unit actually standing there uh, in order for this to work out, which is a little inconvenient. Uh, and then we definitely want to push forward on this city. I'm super annoyed about that suddenly I have two archers thing. They must have they had an archer in Gordian and they must have had another archer like in this tile. So he has a bunch of archers, he just was choosing not to use them against Kumasi for reasons that are unclear to us. Uh, even without Kumasi's army being levied, they're still fighting him, so... Man, Mvemba, you're killing me. You're killing me over here. Okay, well my plan was to, uh, to maybe head through this way, but it's going to be a minute before we can do that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to walk really slowly around here. And I'm still thinking, like, that this is maybe the location. 
It's not amazing. We can't actually get a unit across this turn. We can do this. Fire on the city. Probably don't want to attack with the scout. <laughs> that feels pretty bad. Alright, well we're going to get Hagmatana. 10 combat strength city is pretty easy to take, even with the worst units, it turns out. We're still not at our growth cap. I kind of want to just keep pumping out military units, honestly. It is worth noting that the barracks does give you the bonus experience for um, archer type units, whereas the uh, the stable is a little bit more narrow. Yeah, I think we're I think we're still just producing units here. You know, what, let's build one builder. We definitely have use for one builder. Okay, we've become the suzerain of Kumasi, and now we are going to immediately levy their military. A new front opens in the war between Persia and Hungary as control of Kumasi changes on the borders. Okay, I did not even know that there was an era score bonus for this. Well, it's looking to me like it's maybe uh, extremely possible that we could hit uh, a golden age then. Because if we, if we win a couple more military victories and... Alright, see, now the city is under siege because... This unit has control of these three tiles, and then these two units are covering the tiles that they're standing on. Which means that we for sure are going to get it next turn. They do not have any defenses over here. You are probably just going to heal up. Unfortunately, uh, me levying these units means that there's a whole turn of them not fighting. that we, did, we don't get to use them this turn and they won't act, obviously, during Kumasi's turn either. It was kind of an awkward moment for them to not fight for an entire turn, but I guess that's just where we're at. So after we take Hagmatana, uh, we can start heading west with these units and putting pressure on Gordian. Remember that our levied units have bonus combat strength and stuff, so they will fight a little bit more effectively. Uh, and I think we are headed toward horseback riding now. We need to actually build a campus, which is probably going to be a High priority in the capital and in Estragom as soon as this archer is finished. Yeah, the bonus combat strength is making it really tough for uh, <laughs> really tough for Persia's units to do damage. So we have entered a new era of discovery. We are certainly upgrading our uh, government, probably to an oligarchy. All land melee, anti-cavalry, and naval melee class units gain plus four combat strength. Seems pretty okay right now. We have an awful lot of warriors who are uh, who are going to benefit from this. And then, so we're in a Dark Age, right? Plus five combat strength for all melee attack units. I'm tempted to take Twilight Valor. Um, domestic Roots is also potentially interesting, but it doesn't allow us to settle new cities. And we're not we're not ready to put down our city just yet. We also have a governor title. We know that that is going to him. He's going to pick up garrison commander. We're going to put up the we're going to put the new city down here. I don't love it. I'd much rather settle there if it was possible. But this is a pretty defensible position, and the city will serve as a uh, a place to purchase units for our ver in our uh, various wars. So we should be able to knock Hong Kong out pretty quickly. We're not going to be able to get it under siege due to the coast, but we can uh, we can make its life difficult. Oh, I should I should place our policies first. So I think we are going to run Twilight Valor for at least a couple of turns. Domestic trade routes get plus two food, plus two production is is really great, but it's probably not the thing we want right this second. And charismatic leader I think is our green policy because we already have envoys with the city states that we're familiar with. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what the best order to do this in is. I guess the scout can capture the city. Then we can shoot you and then melee attack you down to like no health, so you're not really a threat anymore. 
We cannot attack the archer with this warrior this turn, so I'm going to have this warrior actually head over in this direction. Oh, it turns out there's a city that has an archer in it over here. Boy, he sure does have a lot of archers all of a sudden. Uh, so raising the city will really upset Cyrus. Here's the thing. I don't think this city is good at all. I guess it gives us a place to buy units. Yeah, sure. We still have a fair amount of gold. Definitely need to figure out how we're going to kill all of his units. So we don't need... I, like These warriors don't really help over in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is already kind of at maximum capacity for being attacked, right? What am I going to do with these warriors? Pressuring Gordian is a little bit tricky without ranged units. And we have ranged units on the way, but it's going to be a minute. I think maybe just... Right, cannot heal outside of my own territory. Does it, did it say my territory or friendly territory? Outside my territory. Okay, so maybe the right play is... We had these units over to Hagmatana, from which we can maybe even pressure Cyrus's capital. We do have to take Cyrus's capital to win the game via the method we intend to win the game in. We don't necessarily have to wipe him out completely. Yeah, okay, let's head in the direction of pressuring Cyrus's capital. If I attack here, we probably die to the archer. Actually, that tile's not a hill, so the archer will not be able to fire from this location to this location because of all the trees. Oh, and that's a really good promotion, actually. Okay, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to move these guys up through Hagmatana and pressure Tarsus and uh, Pasargade. And you are definitely going to build me... A Warlord's Throne. Capturing an enemy city grants 20% bonus production in all cities for five turns. That won't actually take as long as it looks like it's going to take. First of all, only 19 turns, actually, because of the production bonus. But secondly, obviously, we're going to keep gaining production, and we have stuff happening. Really? Rebellion in three turns? Huh. I'm surprised by how quickly that's going to flip. Like, I knew, I knew we weren't going to have an easy time holding it because of all the loyalty here. Uh, well, then I guess work on whatever. We... I'm going to reassign him to Hagmatana. He can help to hold it, maybe. If it doesn't look like he'll be able to do it, we will just pop him into this city like we originally planned. And with access to political philosophy, let's grab military tradition, because it'll give us the ability to get uh, flanking and support combat bonuses. It will also give us the ability to swap our um, swap our social policy once this city is down. It'll finish right as we put that city down. Because I do think I want the bonus food and production from internal trade routes more. Oh, you could attack. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm okay with this. If I throw in open borders for myself, does that give me more gold? No, he actually doesn't care about my open borders at all. Okay. We're not making use of the horses just yet. So, this scout... Like, we probably do this. Okay, we're, we're not actually as bad on loyalty as it looked like. The scout is going to fall back. I guess we can move to here. Yeah, this has a movement cost of two, so we can move to here, still take a point. And I'm definitely taking faster movement in uh, wooded type terrain. And then this guy, what do we want to do with this archer? And we certainly want to take volley. I am still the suzerain of Armaz, so we should be able to move through their territory. The fact that our movement apparently ends at their border is just sort of a coincidence. Definitely going to grab Battlecry. 
My hope here is that by moving away from their cities a little bit, we can draw their archers out so that we can actually attack them. Because we can't kill those archers as long as they're inside the city walls. We don't actually have enough money to levy Hong Kong's military right away. I think we do want to liberate this, which will make us their suzerain. And then I guess they don't actually have a military right away, so no, <laughs> never mind. But we are getting a plus production in the capital for wonders and buildings and districts. And we are about to be building a district, so that's nice. And we can, in fact, heal in friendly city-state territory, even though it's not actually my territory. Alright, so let's spend a turn doing that. We're gonna move to this kind of sketchy city location. We're just gonna we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna deal. All right. Well, we're making headway. Certainly, I don't know that this war is necessarily going to yield us a whole lot more. I'm a little worried about the uh, the lack of sophistication of our units. And since we know we're not going to be able to buy any, um, or we're not gonna be able to levy a military from Hong Kong, probably just purchasing an archer over here would be the next best thing. If Cyrus doesn't get walls up pretty quickly, he's in some trouble. But again, like, just momentum is going to be tricky. Also, I totally forgot about this slinger down here. He's he's moving up. But we did liberate Hong Kong, and that in itself is definitely valuable. And I don't expect Hong Kong will actually flip due to loyalty pressure. City-states get a lot of natural pressure on themselves. All right, well, I think maybe that is where we're going to call it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time to see exactly how much more value we can wring out of this war, and we'll see you then.